more. To the Dutchman. Our silent partner in our first big touch. Yep, there he was with 50 grand of our dough in his pocket. to keep it all for himself. All for himself. But Dane, Corey, and I didn't like that. important. You're coming here for dinner. What happened? Did you run out of nickels for the automat? As a matter of fact, I merely thought I'd drop in for a little dessert. All right, Ambrose. What are you... Found in the Dutchman's pocket when they fished him out of the Hudson several years ago. One-way passage. Get to the point. I have a close friend. He works downtown in the DA's office. So what? Exhibit A. You can print those up for a dime a dozen. The grand jury's been sitting in secret session. The DA is requesting indictments, and he's likely to get them. What are you doing? Selling me yesterday's newspaper? Tomorrow's newspaper. You'll be reading about yourself. So I'll add it to my scrapbook. Buy your friend a hot punch Sunday. Toss one in for yourself. My friend wouldn't lie to me, Martin. That's lovely material. The first of your guests have arrived, Mr. Martin. Give him a drink as he goes through the kitchen. I like it, don't you? That is very good. Hi, girls. Hello. Hello. Come in. Oh, not bad, not bad. Too much personality too soon. But you'll do. All right, let's have your names. Judy, Margot, Gladys, Astra. All right, girls, relax. Now, this affair tonight is high class. Caviar, champagne, full treatment. I want you girls to talk, well, just like you're out of the finishing school. Got some big citizens coming from high circles. Don't ask their names. And when dinner is over, you disappear. We'll be discussing things of civic interest to the community. When it's all over, you come back and you go into your song and dance routine. Two of the boys up in downtown. You draw one. You draw the other. 
The one from Washington is yours. Law books, that's my attorney, will handle you. And second thought, I'll handle you myself. Now, uh, if any of you dolls try to promote me dough to pay off the family mortgage, you'll get an arm broken. Now, if the gentleman from Washington talks politics, what are you going to say? Me? Why, little old me. I just love the president. <laughs> <laughs> now, these two personalities from downtown, District Attorney's Office. Martin, the crew of guys moving in. Smells like John Downs. Yeah. Yeah. Tell law books I'll get word to them. those DA boys wasn't easy. Never mind that. What went on? It was like opening the door into the district attorney's office. And the gentlemen who came for dinner, they claimed they walked into the wrong apartment. Sure, sure, my friends. Well, line up the hungry hands. We'll buy our way out. Not this time. I said we'd buy our way out. The district attorney has rounded up your old friend, Dane Corey. Got a cigarette. And the district attorney talks Mr. Corey into a deal. The DA agrees to lay off him, and all Corey has to do is tell everything he knows about you. You've been indicted for extortion and rackets. Next, they'll try to prove murder. That was years ago when Corey and I split up. They can't prove anything. I've turned respectable. I'm a legitimate businessman now. I even pay my taxes. So does the district attorney. But he's got his eye on the governor's mansion. And you're the big fish that's going to help him into it. And if he ever runs for president, you'll still be in Sing Sing. Leave town. The state. But do it now. Tonight. much talking he did. Ready on stage. Oh, Corey, darling, now I do have to go. You know it's bad luck to be late for a rehearsal. This is black. Oh, Corey. Honey, hold still. Your motor's running. I don't know how I'll ever be able to breathe in this thing. This costume, I tell you, and that little man on the stage. <laughs> Will you stop worrying? Look at the talent I've surrounded you with. Corey, I love you dearly, but honestly, $50,000 these days is such a small sum. What do you want to do, make this show a lifetime career? The only reason I'm putting it on is to keep your mind occupied. And another thing, I thought you were going to send Elsie away to school. Every time I turn around, that kid's there in my hair. They're waiting on stage. Coming. Now, how can a little girl like Elsie get in the hair of a great, big, beautiful man like you? How do you expect me to dance in this costume? I can hardly walk. Madam, I created this costume, and you will perform in it. Music. <laughs> This is not a burlesque show. This costume was created for mood. Don't you understand? For mood. Corey, 
Corey, are you going to let this midget tell me about mood? Look, honey, do like the man says. If he wants mood, give him mood. That's what I'm paying him for. All right, brother, you ask for it. Let's try it again, please. Music. <laughs> Censor up your mind and sit there like a gentleman. You're thinking about my fiance. Me? I was only thinking about her talent. That one false thing about her. He's looking for you. Check the lobby. Special visit from quite a stranger, huh, Freddy? Go out that exit down to the alley. Keep the cover. Must be that living on Park Avenue. Yeah, and you haven't gotten yourself out of the gutter. Corey, I'd like to extend an invitation. You'll be my guest at a place I have up in the country. I'd like to talk over that deal you made with the DA. Well, uh, I'm kind of busy tonight. I'm putting on a big show inside. Come on, opening night, I'll leave a pass for you. Come on, Corey, get moving. I've got a beautiful doll waiting for me inside. You wouldn't want her to get lonesome, would you? Huh? <laughs> Corey!
I'm only the manager here. I get paid for watching the apartments, not the tenants. Let me tell you, this girl is really beautiful. Lives somewhere on McDougal Street in Greenwich Village. Of course, I don't know the exact address. What do you call that? Did it hurt? Oh, Elsie, I was dreaming. A long shot I had was leading in a stretch. Now I don't know who won the race. Hey, where you been? The Hattie Carnegie's? It's almost tomorrow, and you ain't even been near that bed yet. Oh, lots of times when beautiful Mama's out, I stay awake and I dress like this. Yeah, yeah. You're a thing of beauty, kid. But the fashion show is over. You gotta hit the hay. Come on. <sighs> Pounding the pillow just like a little angel. How many horses have you two got running tomorrow? Oh, Mama. I was only trying to look beautiful, Mama, just like you. Well, it's not beauty that counts, darling. It's character. The brightest star on Broadway. Lots of money, fancy clothes for you and me, and I'll send you to the most finishing finishing school. That means Mr. Corey be my new papa. And I don't want him for my new papa. You shouldn't talk about Corey that way, darling. He's made me his protege. Mr. Corey's mean. He hates my dog. Anyway, why can't I have my real papa? Well, I already told you, Elsie. He died before you were born. One night, two of his friends picked him up for a ride in an automobile. And there was an accident. What's with the kid and Sonia? Come out of there. Pleasant dreams, loving. Good night, Mama. Oh, really, dear Cora, you shouldn't have called off the show tonight. Not even a one-night stand. Well, I had one. Two-hour song and dance routine, waltzing around with the police. Well, there. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Let them worry about the shooting. That's what they're paid for. Now, that's a real bright thought. Maybe you didn't mean what 
you learn about my wonderful talent. Lonesome over here. Beautiful. This will keep you good company. Corey, you're not going to ruin my future. No, no. No more beautiful mama. <laughs> Between you and your future and that kid and that dog, I'm going to get rid of that dog. Precinct 72 calling in. Nope, everything quiet. Just sent a drunk along his way.
Ivan. Like you're scuffed up almost the same as I am. Me with a 38 in my shoulder. You with a bum right eye. <laughs> Fine pair of invalids we are. What's your name, Tom? All right. I'll call you Johnny. You're Johnny One Eye from now on. Well, fella, I guess you're wondering why I'm holed up here, huh? I'm looking for a rat. A friend called Dane Corey. He's hiding out somewhere in Greenwich Village. Too bad you're not a cat. Maybe you could help me find him. Yeah. Yeah. And talk Corey out of telling people I killed the Dutchman. Too bad about Freddy. at myself for thinking he might be the boogeyman. Who are you? Where do you live? How'd you get in this house? Why, I'm Elsie. I live down the street. Skipper was lost. He lost the crowd to open doors. What's your name? And why are you sitting in the floor in the cold? Cheers. Do you have any little girls like me and love them dearly? By no means, not at all. Well, anyway, I know you love my dog because you're kind to Skipper, and Skipper loves you. His name's not Skipper, it's Johnny One-Eye. Well, if you like it best, I'll call him Skipper Johnny One-Eye. Oh, you didn't have to do that. Johnny's real smart. He's housebroken. <laughs> why is your picture in the paper? But why is your picture in the paper? You tell me. Read it. I can't read, but I can draw. Oh. Elsie, can you keep a secret? Oh, yes. I love secrets. Well, I'll tell you. It says here how I just got to be Santa Claus. How 
can you be Santa Claus? You have the whiskers like him, and where's your red suit? And it's not Christmas. Anyway, Santa Claus lives at the North Pole with his reindeers. Hmm. Well, well, I'll tell you, Elsie. As soon as I found out about Johnny here being hurt and getting himself lost, I ran away from the North Pole so fast, I didn't have time to let my whiskers grow or put on a uniform or anything. That's why I'm wearing these clothes. You mean you really are Santa Claus? You came just to help Johnny? You guessed it. I came just to help Johnny and protect him. Now, if you promise to keep my secret, don't tell anybody you've seen me. Don't tell a soul. If you keep that secret, next Christmas, I'll come down your chimney with a big bag full of presents. Oh, I promise, and Johnny promises too. And you said you didn't love no girl. Well, okay. Okay, you take Johnny now and, and go home. He's all better. No, Johnny won't be hurt again. But you promised to keep him here. Then I'll have a secret too. And I'll come back to see you both every day. Goodbye, Johnny. Thank you, Santa Claus. You're the luckiest girl in the world. Well, first, waiting for you. Another two minutes and there'd have been no surprise. Uh, does Santa Claus ever drive around in a big automobile? Oh, you and your fanciful imagination. Well, even a child knows he's never without a sleigh and reindeer. Go ahead, baby, open it. There, your reward. You see, all in life is not tragedy. Feel him, pick him up. He's just like Skipper. <laughs> oh, that sales girl promised she'd take the bark out. Just remember, darling, whenever Corey's around, don't pick the dog up. I gotta get to that set. I don't wanna miss this fight. I want to tell you. Make yourself at home, boys. If you don't see what you want, ask for it. Later, Corey's here. Better start getting undressed. Lippy and I were going to watch television. We had a bet on a fight. And you can chatterbox yourself off to bed. I'll get you supper. Hiya, Mama. Where's the kid? I laid her eight to five on the bikes tonight. Yeah, but I gave her two to one. She was going to bed. Hello, beautiful. How about fixing me a drink? Lippy, will you turn that thing off? Go on and talk to the boys or something. Boy, ever since the other night, it's been like living in a rogue gallery around here. One character after another. Busy, busy, busy. Thanks. Listen, honey, I'm expecting someone in just a minute. When you let him in, don't let his face frighten you. He's really harmless. When are you going to stop turning this place into a zoo? Hello. Corey. Any 
concern of Martin? Well, keep looking. I don't want any surprises. Can you show the gentleman in? What? Yeah. Hello, Ambrose. Isn't that beautiful mama? Charming. Honey, I think you might be able to help Rippy in the kitchen. Why, of course. Great little gal. Lots of talent. So I noticed. Sit down. I have a problem, Ambrose. Thought you could help me. Same problem the police have, I imagine. Where do you think Martin is? Somewhere out there, looking for you. Think you could locate him? I understand, Corey. That ferry boat ride across the Hudson several years ago. No honeymoon trip, was it? Ambrose, I once knew a peeping Tom who lost both his eyes looking through keyholes. Served him right. Now, where do I come in? 10,000 COD. Quite liberal. As a matter of fact, I have every reason to believe Mr. Martin will be in touch with me very soon. Ambrose, be careful. You play two ends against the middle and you're going to wind up. Me, Corey? I only like to be paid off in money. Good night, Corey. Don't trouble. I can find my way out. Where's the front page of the paper? Well, it was here. Has dear little Elsie been cutting out pictures again? Did you take the paper? Did you take the paper? What'd you tear out the page for? I just did that, Paul. What for? I wanted to look at the picture of Santa Claus. Come here. What makes you think that that's a picture of Santa Claus? Because it is. I know it is. How do you know? I know because next Christmas Santa Claus is coming down the chimney with lots of dollars of presents. You would think that's a picture of Santa Claus. And you would be a stinker. you wanted more than anything in the whole world. A little puppy dog. She had the name all picked out. Skipper. And then we wrote a note. And I hung it over the fireplace. And what was under the Christmas tree in the morning? Skipper, Mama Skipper. There. You see, there really is a Santa Claus. I knew Mr. Corey was wrong. He said there wasn't any Santa Claus. Well, now, Elsie, what makes you think the man in the paper is Santa Claus? Mama, don't you really know? Look, he's just a misty sky. You know, when you heard about Johnny when I be lost? I mean, Skipper, Mama. He left the North Pole just to find us. You know what? Next Christmas, Santa 
Claus is going to come down the chimney, put Skipper right under the Christmas tree. <laughs> That's right, Elsie. But if you go off to sleep, you might get Skipper back before next Christmas. Santa Claus might be in a disguise right this minute as the policeman on our block or the man who sells the newspapers on the corner. Even in this disguise? Yes, Elsie. I imagine even this man wouldn't hurt little Skipper if he knew what a good little girl you are. Dream your dreams, baby. Good night. Good night, Mommy. Well, she does have a lot on her mind lately. I want you and Johnny something to eat. Thank you. Johnny loves to do this. Do you know of any pet shops around here? Pet shop? The poor dog. In life, the firmest friend. The first to welcome, foremost to defend. Lord Byron. <laughs> ah, what a soul that man had. I'm sorry. Seeing the mongrel carried me away. There is such a place around the corner. 
Thanks. Doctor? Well, I am a kind of a bat. This is Johnny One Eye. I'm going to leave him here with you. When you got him, take a good look at his eye. Just a minute. You better come inside. thing I can do for this dog is to put it away. Let me give it something. It'll go to sleep and never know what happened. Well, how about some kind of an operation or something? Nothing will help your dog. It's not long for this world. It's the idea of trying to save a dog like this. You can get a million like it for a nickel. Uh-uh. Not this one. This is not just a dog. This is Johnny One-Eye. The only living thing that ever came pushing up against me warm and friendly life that ever trusted me in all my life. I feel sorry for him. I feel sorry for him, too. I always feel sorry for animals that get hurt. And for people. But I don't feel sorry for people. I just feel sorry for Johnny One Eye here. Can't you give me some kind of stuff for him to eat? You can give your dog some milk. There's a delicatessen store at the corner. Thanks. Mister, you look sick yourself. Can I do anything for you? I've seen your kind of look on guys before. Okinawa, Midway. I can smell a guy with a bullet in him. Some of them died before I delivered them to the medics. Like you will. What are you getting at? Maybe I just feel charitable tonight. Take your coat off. Here, let me help you. Better have a shot of this. Better than nothing at all. Study to be a doctor. Didn't make it. You don't mind, do you? <laughs> Liberated these instruments from the medical corps.
Your phone call was a nice surprise, Martin. Social visit? Business. Like where you can find Dane Corey? That's it. I telephoned the police. Anonymous, of course. Now the whole force is waiting for me to call back. Then I telephoned Dane Corey. He offered me 10,000 for you, Martin. Now he's waiting. And I'm the only person who knows where you are. Twist my memory, Martin. Fifteen thousand, where's Corey? I'm feeling no pain, Martin. Not talking, Ambrose. My son wouldn't like that. Drop your gun. Thank you, Francis. Your timing was perfect. Before you turn around, put your gun down. That way we can deal with each other honestly. You kill me. How can I tell you where Dane is? You got a drink around here somewhere? Yes. Sit down, Martin. Since you're my guest, I won't send you into the kitchen for it. Oh, by the way, Francis is my friend that works in the district attorney's office. It took a bit of persuasion getting Francis to join me in this deal. Now you were saying 15,000 for Dane? You don't seem very anxious to find him. What's your price? It isn't often a bag of gold drops into a person's lap. And you see, thanks to Francis, I wasn't selling yesterday's newspaper. 25,000. How do we get paid? When I get Corey. We're in a peculiar position, Martin. If somebody walked in, we could be accused of harboring a criminal. That would jeopardize my position downtown. That's why we're turning you over to the police. $5,000 reward and no questions asked. To Corey, he's worth maybe 20000 We made our decision, Ambrose. You promised we wouldn't get involved. It's worth the risk dealing with Corey. No questions asked, no police inquiries. My mind's made up. I'm not getting involved with Corey. I'll lose my job. Corey's phone number. I know Corey. I know how he operates. You pay with one hand and steal it back with the other. Then that face of yours, Francis, hamburger. Stop working on him, Martin. I'm dealing with Corey. Ambrose, it'll cost me my job. Put the phone down. I need it, Ambrose. Shut up. You're drunk. We're doing this my way. Hello, Corey? Show yourself, Lord. Book me in case. Put on your clothes. Get out here like you ordered a cab. Looks 
like a friend may be taking a ride. To see one of his clients, maybe. Well, that's what lawyers are for. Car 42, 42. Stand by, we're ready to take off. We'll call en route. maniac coming here like this. I'm being watched 24 hours a day. They shouldn't mind then if I have your company for about 30 minutes. Besides, who's going to figure the hottest guy in the city is driving a hack around this hour of the night, eh, Johnny? They're not morons, Martin. Right now, they're practically in the back seat. You should have listened to me. Gotten out of town while you could. When I pay off Corey. Listen, Martin. Killing Freddy. Well, self-defense. But trying to kill Corey, that's premeditated. They'll strap you in that chair for sure. You're gonna see that they don't. They got a way to move me someplace. Martin, there isn't a place in or out of town they haven't got planted. Every one of your contacts. Even your bank accounts are tied up. So are my hands. Well, I'll tie them. Get me a new setup. Find out where Corey is. He's somewhere in Venice Village. Uh, the place I'm staying is getting too warm. I need time. A day or two, and it'll take some money. Won't be easy, but I'll manage. Go back where you're hiding. I'll have some help for you. But, Martin, you'll have to find Corey yourself. In all our books, sometimes I think you're an honest counselor. Heading west on 57th, going toward Broadway, alert cars for code three. We'll instruct further. Why have you stopped? You wanted the morning papers, didn't you? Keep the chain. Thanks. Come to put me to bed, gentlemen? You gentlemen should know a lawyer has a right to be talking to his client any time, any place. Sure, sure. You probably had a big conference with your client, Martin, in a taxi. <laughs> Johnny, here we are, back at the Ritz Towers. Let's hope the kid doesn't get any ideas about talking. Yeah. 
After school, I played with Charlie. You were dreaming. I was frightened. Well, that's all right, Elsie. It's just a dream. You better go on home now. Yes, I must go home. I must be in bed early. Mr. Corey is coming for supper. Corey? Did you say Dan Corey? Yes, do you know him? You might say Mr. Corey and I are old playmates. Did he kick you and hurt you like he did Johnny One-Eye? Uh-uh. Listen, Elsie. I want you to be a smart little girl and pay strict attention. When you go home and see Mr. Corey, tell him when you came looking for your dog, you found me sick, lying on the floor, and I couldn't move. Tell him I'm the man you see in the newspapers. But that's our secret. Mr. Corey will also keep that secret. I'm the worst guesser in the world. But he will come and hurt Johnny, and you too. No, Elsie. He'll never hurt anybody or kick anything again as long as he lives. As long as he lives. That I promise you. Now listen, Elsie. When you see Mr. Corey leave for this house, you get this note to a policeman. He'll know what to do. All right, now it's your turn. Tell me, what are you supposed to do? I am to go home and wait up for Mr. Corey. And if Mr. Corey leaves for this house, I am to get this note to a policeman. When I came in, looking for my dog, there was this man. He was very sick. Corey, I've been thinking. New York is so big and so crowded. It's the wrong place for me to show my talents. I think I'll do some summer stock. Besides, Elsie would love the smell of the theater. Well, you're not even listening. You can't forget that Martin, can you? Sure. I'll make like I'm a sitting duck tooting gallery and let him take shots at me. I'm not looking to kill him. All I want to do is cooperate with the police, you know, do my duty as a good citizen. television broadcast at headquarters of the New York City Police Department. In cooperation with the police, we are televising the picture of Martin Martin, the most sought after and dangerous individual in New York City today. A reward of $5,000 is offered for information leading to this man's capture, dead or alive. How do you like that? Five grand they offered, dead or alive. If I could get my hands on him, I'd kill him for charity. Elsie, <laughs> what's the matter? Are you sick? Not a bandit. Not Santa Claus. Santa Claus. Not a bandit. What do you say? Sure. Sure. I was all wrong. Maybe there is a Santa Claus, and maybe you know who he is and where he is. Now, come on, tell your old friend Dane all about it. I don't know. Sure you know. Didn't you cut his picture out of the paper? Corey. Come on, now, tell me where he is. Leave her alone. She doesn't know anything about this, do you, Elsie? All children cut out pictures and play games. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get you a brand new little dog, any kind you like. You gave Johnny. You hurt my dog. If it wasn't for... If it wasn't for what? Come on, out with it. Oh, come along with me, Elsie. She's telling. Now, come on, where's Martin? He's not Martin. I'm telling you, leave her alone. Up. Come here and tell me where he is. What are you going to do? Come on, Martin. 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 Come
got in your hand? What do you got in your hand? Corey. Turn around, Corey. Stay right there. Elsie, come back! Put down a gun and stop acting like Sarah Bernhardt and East Lynn. So I lost my head. You stay right where you are. Elsie's not getting mixed up in any shooting. That kid is going right back to Mark. I'm not interested in Martin. If she went to tell him to get out, let him get out. The police can handle it after that. across the street? You might as well relax till I see Elsie come out. Then you're on your own. Yeah, yeah, I'm on my own. I got the same murder rap hanging over me that Martin has. He talks and I'll be sitting in his lap when they pull that switch up at Sing Sing. At least that'll warm up your heart. Yeah. yeah. Get me the police. Do like I say. Go on, beat it. No. Please get up. Let me help you, please. Like I said, now beat it. No. You're just a dumb little kid. I'm not Santa Claus. I'm Martin. The guy Corey's looking for. The guy the police are looking for. Santa Claus. Santa Claus? I'm not Santa Claus. I was lying to you. No. I was playing house with you. The same as with Johnny One Eye. You're just a dumb little girl. Now get out of here! Take Johnny with you!
Chance of the kid being out gentle for the reward, is it? You say the taxpayers a lot of dough. We heard about what you did. You like that, huh? I got the remainder of 20 bucks in my kick. The kid don't know it, but Johnny's a gone or two. Do me a favor. Take the dough. Thank you, Santa Claus. <laughs> 